Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to today's show. And I want to go ahead and take a look at the coronavirus situation in New York City and the words of Oxyrus Barbeau. And we'll get into that in a second. But let's take a look at New York City real quick. And through May 17th, I think the first case was reported January 31st, but through May 17th, we have 190,000 plus cases in the city alone, 50,000 plus hospitalized, and about 20,000 confirmed and probable fatalities due to coronavirus 19. Um, so yeah, clearly the epicenter of the United States. And in some cases, it could be considered the epicenter of um, much of the Western world. Um, so let me introduce you to, this is Axiris Barbeau, MD. And if you're not familiar with her, she's the commissioner of the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. And um, in this video, I want you to know in this podcast that she has is possibly one of the worst health officials I've ever seen in my in my years. So um, I just want you to know this is Dr. Axiris Barbeau, if I if I pronounce that correctly. So what am I talking about? Well, as I said, the, the first cases were being reported in New York City um, several months ago, and uh, this was Dr. Barbeau tweeting on February 9th saying today our city is celebrating the Lunar New Year Parade in Chinatown, a beautiful cultural tradition with a rich history in our city. I want to remind everyone to enjoy the parade and not change any plans due to misinformation spreading about coronavirus. And so that, that you know, a lot of people commented on that tweet and uh, here's one individual saying that, well, this happened in 1918 also. It's called the Death Parade. And other people were thinking the same thing. Wow, maybe this is why New York City has had so many COVID-19 cases now. And um, here's another person who writes, and now people in New York City can't leave their homes because you weren't serious. Does this beautiful cultural tradition include spreading disease and plague around the world? Anyway, so you get the point those that's the way the comments were um throughout that tweet so we'll take a look at some of the things that dr barbeau said um before that and after that um there was a a dire warning from federal officials and new york city politicians urged residents not to overreact to the threat and this is soon after this is after hearing words from Dr. Fauci, Secretary Azar, and others uh, concerning this being a public health emergency. It says City Health Commissioner Exiris Barbeau on February 6th acknowledged that the virus could spread from person to person, but attempted to reassure residents that the type of transmission would be rare outside of households. Uh, quote, the important thing for New Yorkers to know is that the city currently uh, their risk is very low and our city preparedness is high, Barbo said. We know that this virus can be transmitted from one individual to another, but it is typically people who live together. There is no risk at this point in time about having it transmitted in casual contact. And of course, in this article, they refer to her tweet uh, concerning the Lunar New Year in, in Chinatown. Um, and this, this was in response because there was, as the coronavirus information was getting out, uh, businesses in Chinatown were, were getting hit as people became more nervous. So Barbo came out and said, oh, no, not a big deal, right? Not a big deal. Then it goes on. It says, by the time the Lunar New Year parade arrived, it was already clear that a humanitarian disaster had occurred in Wuhan as evidenced by the chants at the parade. Barbeau continued through the beginning of March to reassure New Yorkers through the beginning of March 
that they could carry on with their business so long as they took a few minor health precautions in the process. Quote, we know that there's currently no indication that it's easy to transmit by casual contact, she said, on March 2. We want New Yorkers to go about their daily lives, ride the subway, take the bus, go see your neighbors. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, and, and, we, and, we, and we see what this, this happened. Pack subways, pack buses, uh, with this infection spreading throughout New York City quite rapidly. Um, and then it's, uh, this article also goes on to say that um, after going through a whole bunch, uh, Isaac Weisfuse, he's a former New York City Deputy Health Commissioner, told the New York Times, quote, New York City as a whole was late in social measures. Any after-action review of the pandemic in New York City will focus on that issue. It has become the major issue in the transmission of the virus. So, so yeah, so there you go. You got the health commissioner, the top health figure in New York City, saying, get on those subways. Don't change your life. Get on those buses. Continue on as this virus is spreading rapidly through the densest populated city, the largest city in the United States. But that isn't all with uh, Dr. Barbeau. She um, she also um, is under fire for um, a confrontation she had with New York City's police commissioner concerning masks. And let's take a look at that. It says, uh, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio faced calls on Thursday to fire his health commissioner after a news report that she dismissed a police request for hard-to-find surgical mask to protect officers from coronavirus, saying essentially she didn't care. Um, citing anon- anonymous sources, the New York Post late Wednesday reported a heated exchange between Health Commissioner Axiris Barbeau and the city police chief, police chief in late March when she rejected his request for 500,000 masks, saying she could only provide 50,000. The report highlighted shortages of the vital protective equipment in the U.S. And uh, according to the Post, Barbeau is quoted as saying, during a conversation with New York Police Department Chief Terrence Monahan, quote, I don't give a rat's asses about your cops. I need them for others. So de Blasio saying he's gathering information and suggested an apology would be appropriate. So it, de Blasio doesn't have the greatest um, relationship with the police in his city either. So you shouldn't be fully surprised that he's not really coming down on Dr. Barbeau. But the fact that she's talking to this guy, um, basically saying, I, we don't care if you, if the cops live or die. That, that That's a serious problem. And uh, hopefully this gets looked at a little bit further. 